All right, I'll start letting people in. Okay. Let's see here. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Great to see you all once again. And Steve, what is your preference for questions? Do you like to do it uh, during special sections or should I bring those in as they come? Well, I've uh, split this up into three parts. So I was thinking we could, you know, like hold the questions till the end of each part. Okay. And, um, you know, that way we won't get too far from the topic before people ask questions. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. All right. All right. So it looks like mostly we got, uh, we got still got people trying to enter. Do, do. Are you, um, is it possible for you to minimize your presentation for a minute? Okay. Yeah, I think. Just want to make sure. Continue to let people in here. Yeah, how do I? Oh, there we go. Oh, I see. Somebody's in the waiting room, but they're joining. Okay, that's good. Okay, cool. I will. Um, I will start. I'll give a little bit of intro, and then we can get started. Sound good? Sounds good. All right. Awesome. <clears throat> well, we are on. We are. We're live on Facebook and YouTube at the moment, and we'll sign off there in about 15 minutes. But we're also um, live for Radio Hour attendees. Uh, we, for, for anybody who wanted to join Radio Hour for free, as they typically do on Saturdays, this is when we would have Radio Hour. So we offered an option that uh, we've linked you to a special page where you can view the full first hour of Steve Brady's lecture here on dampers. Um, fortunately, we'll, unfortunately, we'll cut you off at about an hour there, but if you did want to register for the convention, you can join us um, for the recordings of all the lectures and so on and so forth. There'll be a link on that page where you're viewing. And in the meantime, uh, we'll get started here with the Zoom session, and I'll give a quick intro to our friend Steve Brady. And that will sound like this. Steve is an award-winning piano technician and respected PTG veteran. In 2012, he was included in the PTG Hall of Fame. In 2016, he was awarded the PTG's Golden Hammer Award, one of the profession's highest honors for his contributions in the piano industry. He is author of Under the Lid, The Art and Craft of the Concert Piano Technician. He resides in Seattle, Washington. And in this class today, he's gonna to focus primarily on grand dampers. Title of the class is Dampers from the Ground Up. He does touch on upright damper replacement and regulation as well uh, as earlier grand damper systems. For anyone confused about the wire bends and grand dampers, he'll discuss their purposes and adjustments in some detail and demonstrate how to align and space the dampers and troubleshoot dampers that aren't doing their job well. He knows damper work is mysterious to many technicians, but it's really simpler than you might think. He'll cover it from the ground up, step by step. And I will take this opportunity to hand it over to you, Steve, and just uh, let me know whenever you need assistance with anything. Okay. Um, <clears throat> do you yeah. wanna go full screen in the very beginning here? Yeah, I do. I can. Okay, let me take off your screen share real quick. Uh, let's see here. Let's let these people in from the waiting room. And then how do I get your screen share? View options, stop participant sharing. Okay, and then I'll spotlight you so you can give your intro. There you go. You're oh, on. Great. Thank you, Ethan. Thanks for, uh, you know, setting up this whole convention. This is uh, I know it's a huge undertaking for you. Um, and I've enjoyed the sessions I've been able to attend so far. Uh, I decided to do a class on dampers, uh, uh, which I've never done before. 
because it seems to me that damper work along with uh, voicing, maybe a few other things. There are, these are areas where many technicians seem to lack confidence. And uh, I uh, had an experience last year that, that kind of spurred me to want to do this class. I was contacted by a local technician who, uh, he's a good technician and he's been doing this about as long as I have. And he had a Steinway K52 that uh, he had a real damping issue with in the low tenor. And if you know the K52, you know that uh, the damping is so sketchy in that area that they, they often have uh, auxiliary over dampers on a few notes there. Anyway, he had determined that the, the piano needed new damper felts in that area. And he asked me to come along and, and uh, help him with it. And I, I went there loaded for bear. I mean, I, I brought all my damper tools and some damper felts and, and all kinds of stuff. Uh, long story short, I got in and um, started troubleshooting it and was able to fix the problem without replacing any damper felts in about 10 minutes. And I thought, well, that's interesting. I, I've never thought of myself as this, you know, damper whiz, but maybe I do have something to share on it. I've, I've learned a lot over the years. My background, uh, I've been a piano technician for 47 years and uh, 25 of those years I spent at a university as a full-time tech. Uh, I've done about 5,000 concert tunings and uh, I also do rebuilding, but rebuilding is not my main thing. So why from the ground up? Because uh, we're going to start with regulating the, the two pedals that involve the dampers. That would be the damper pedal and the sostenuto. So uh, at this point, I'm going to share my screen. And uh, okay. there. Looking good. Does that look good? Yeah. And if you, or if you want to go full screen, you can. Or if you like that version, you can. Uh, yeah. Um, well, I kind of like this. If if the picture is large, okay. It, okay. Looks okay. Yeah. Okay. So, part one, part one A, regulating the damper pedal. Now, this seems like a pretty straightforward thing, and I, you know, something that most of us do pretty much every day. But I want to get into some of some of the subtleties of how the damper pedals should be regulated. And uh, the first thing is, if you're working on a vertical, you want to regulate the damper lift with the pedal first and regulate the damper lift with the key second. So if you have dampers that aren't lifting uh, evenly with the pedal, uh, you want to take care of that first. And that's because we regulate the damper lift with the pedal on, an, on a vertical by bending the damper wires. So here's a, a little video. I'm going to reach in and I have one that's lifting late here and I'm just going to push it back towards the strings to make it lift a little later or a little earlier. Oh, I guess I said that wrong. Okay, lifting early, so I'm going to push it back with my finger and make it lift later. Okay, now here's another uh, look at the same process. That one's lifting too late, so I, I'm going to make it earlier by just sticking my finger down there and bringing the you know, bending the damper wire, I, you have to bend pretty hard, but it's a very simple procedure. I'll show that again. Okay, <laughs> so 
the point here is that you've on a vertical, you've got to do this job before the uh, you know lift with the keys because you you regulate lift with the keys by bending a spoon. And if you bend the spoon, it's also going to affect the the lift with the pedal. So that that's just uh, an important point to consider on verticals. Now on um, on grand pianos, you do it the opposite way. Um, you regulate the damper lift with the keys first, and then regulate the damper lift with the pedal second. Uh, in both cases, I regulate the pedal allowing up to a quarter of an inch of lost motion in the pedal, measured at the front of the pedal. I wouldn't want more lost motion than that, but you know this is kind of a personal thing, and uh, some pianists prefer a really instantaneous pickup, and some like to have quite a bit of play. But I, I think up to a quarter of an inch measured at the front is a good way to go. Um, on a grand piano, the right way to regulate lost motion in the pedal is usually going to be by shimming under the back end of the pedal. Uh, that's because that's where most of the wear occurs or most of the compression occurs. Uh, and, you know, they, we have adjustments at the top of the pedal rod. And yes, if, if it's a new piano and you notice that that, that uh, adjustment nut at the top has, has kind of worked its way down, sure, yeah, go ahead and bring that back up to where it was originally and lock it in nice and tight. But other than that, on older pianos, what you want to go do is uh, shim under the back end of the pedal. This is really an extreme case, and I think both of the other pedals need the same treatment. But it's this pad under here that's getting compressed over the years by the weight of the pedal. Okay, important point about regulating the, the pedal. Both the pedal and the keys should lift the dampers the same amount, resulting in uh, separation between the damper felts and the strings of about an eighth of an inch. With the pedal fully depressed, uh, and first I'm gonna show you the, just this is the amount of separation that you should be looking for. So uh, if your keys aren't lifting the dampers this high, then you need to ad adjust the damper lift with the keys and, and then do it with the pedal. Once the pedal is, is regulated fully depressed, the dampers should just wink when you play the keys. Okay, and so you, you, you stop the motion of the damper trap lever. Usually there's a piece of felt here on, on Steinways. On a lot of other pianos, there will be a nice adjustment screw. So whatever it takes, you stop the travel of the pedal at the point where you get this effect. And here's a little video. So I've got the pedal pressed all the way down and I'm going to play the keys now. And I want to see just a little winking. That indicates to me that the, damp the pedal is lifting the dampers the same amount as the keys. And you notice there's quite a bit of nice separation between the damper felts and the strings. That's exactly what you want to see. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, nomenclature, just so that when I say the name of a certain part, you'll know what I'm talking about. Because I know in our field, People call uh, the different parts by a lot of different names. So very important part is the under lever down here. Another really important part <clears throat> is this vertical part called the top flange. So when I say top flange, this is what I'm talking about. The damper wire goes into the top flange. And in most cases, in modern pianos, it's uh, secured there by a set screw. You also have the damper upstop rail. 
uh, you have a Sasta noodle rod, which is right here, and the Sasta noodle monkey. <clears throat> Now, the last thing on that uh, slide was when the sharps are fully depressed, there should be about a 16th of an inch of freedom at the damper upstock rail. And I, I have a little video here to show that. So you should be able to lift and, and you want to be playing, you want to be pressing down on a black key when you do that. This is actually a little bit excessive, I think. But, you know, it's not rocket science. That's probably going up about an eighth of an inch. But uh, I, I go for a sixteenth of an inch, and uh, that works fine. If you have too little, you're going to have problems. Now, this is, uh, I want to talk now about um, regulating the Sosta noodle pedal. This is... Um, a diagram, which in my experience, uh, this is not exactly how you want to have this regulated. I've looked at a lot of diagrams in books and uh, service manuals and everything, and I find that usually they have this, the sauce noodle rod too low in relation to the tab. And okay, so the tab is this red thing down here. And it, the, on modern pianos, the tab is going to pivot it's actually you got an action center. So what you really want is to have the, uh, uh, and I'm going to first say this, there are three variables in, uh, the, in regulating the sauce to noodle rod. And the three variables are the height of, of the uh, rod blade. It has to be slightly above the bottom of the top flange tab. And about two millimeters is right, or a sixteenth of an inch. There's height, there's depth, and the, the depth, uh, that is how far, how close is that rod to the tab? You want that blade to be about two millimeters forward of the end of the tab. And then there's rotation. Now, the blade should rotate, it should at rest should be about seven o'clock and should rotate to nine o'clock when it's fully engaged. So you can see it's at about seven o'clock here at rest and rotated, it ends up here. Now the problem with the way it, they have it in this diagram is that the tab is not far enough back. And I'll show you why that's a problem in a little bit. But anyway, you want two millimeters fore and aft, 